Hello everybody, it's Van Berman here. Welcome to my video today. My microphone's fallen over. And parity is resumed. So, today I want to talk about something which I have spoken about a couple of times already so far. And that is Steam Early Access. I've been sort of on the fence about it previously. Uh, I've had sort of differing opinions. I've sort of sat middle of the road, I guess, thought, you know, there are some good endearing aspects of it, which I still do believe. And then I've also gone the other side and said, you know, it is a bit of a loophole for game developers to try and perhaps exploit. And have to say, recently I have gone way more over to the side of not liking the whole early access procedure that Steam employ. I don't know whether this is just because of the Steam box and you know looking at what sort of games are available for that and looking at Steam as a whole and thinking, well, they're not quite as good as you know we perhaps give them credit for. They're the best of a bad bunch. But in all fairness, you know they are fairly, fairly good, really. But, brings me on to my point that we're getting a lot of games released, we're getting a lot of games coming out on Early Access that are nowhere near release. Now, obviously, that's the point. Early Access, right? Yeah, fair enough. But, I do think there are far too many. I believe we have over 250 games on Early Access. I don't know if that's correct or not. It's definitely over 100. I heard somewhere it was 250, so I'm just guessing. But I know it's definitely over 100 Early Access games. And that, for me, is far too many. Far too many games that are far too early in development to be on the platform. The main problem I have with it is that once the developers have got your money for the game, there's no incentive for them to then go and finish it, to do any more of it. Because if it's a very popular game, the vast majority of their sales is going to be in early access. Now, I'm one of these people that massively believes that if War Z or Infestation had had the option of early access, it would have taken it, and it would have absolutely ran and enjoyed doing it that way. Now, I've always said that early access is fine if I can get some enjoyment out of the game. Now, that is still true. I do not regret one bit buying Stomping Lands. Now, that's not that was not updated for a very long time. It was even taken down from the store for a little bit. But in the version that I played, and I played it for a good few hours, I think it was about 10 or 12 hours, I definitely got a lot of fun out of it, and I definitely felt as though, you know, no matter what happens with this game in the future, I definitely feel as though I got my enjoyment out of it and my value out of buying the game, which is quite rare, to be honest. I have just purchased an early access game, which, yeah, no, contradictory to this video, and I will be doing some videos on that in the future. It's not toxic, even though that game looks really good, but uh, probably another example of a game being far too early for even early access, to be honest. And then we've got the other scale, the other side of things, we've got a massive company like Sony Online Entertainment releasing H1Z1 for £15. Far, far, far too much if you want to offer someone, you know, beta access, getting them to test your servers for you, iron out your bugs. I mean, as much as we should want to get involved in a game that is massively multiplayer in order to make it fairer, more balanced, more enjoyable for everyone, putting such a huge price on it is detrimental, really, to the development of the game. And for that reason, I think maybe they should have gone with a much lower buy-in, maybe the £5 mark, and actually took some time to appreciate the people that are willing to test things out. People should have been given, you know, random airdrops, random bits from the store in order to test out. They shouldn't be charging for it in the early access stage, even though, you know, they've done that because they know they will make money, which is a bit problem. It's a bit unscrupulous, really, in all honesty. And as much as I really enjoy H1Z1, I think it's got some very endearing qualities. I think it will be a very fun game. I think it will definitely outdo... Infestation, it already has done. I do think it will outdo the Daisy standalone, perhaps. I don't think it will outdo the Daisy mod. I think, you know, the, ori the original is normally always the best, and despite its flaws of the Daisy mod, 
it does a lot of things really, really well. Um, if nothing else, I could just say helicopters. And, <laughs> you know, that about Trump's, um, Trump's most arguments, to be honest, just because it's such a great feature to it, really, if I'm honest. And I, I think that Steam needs to take a bit more responsibility for their early access. They need to be much more careful about who they do actually give, what games they give early access to. They should be a bit more sparing with it. It should be, they should have much stricter guidelines, and they should monitor it a lot better. It's. I'm not saying it's something that should be totally taken out, but instead of having, if the reported is to be true, 250 early access games, we should have maybe 30 or 40, and it should be a real exception. It should be a game that has massive potential. That is not by a big company. It has to be done by an independent company owned independently as well. Not an independent company or indie company owned by one of the big boys. And it should absolutely prove that it definitely needs that funding in order to make the game better. I mean, without sort of stricter guidelines, how are you going to prove that a developer is totally committed to making a game and they're doing it because they want to make the game, they're not putting early access just to get the funds, just to see, just to get basically the top layer of the the vast bulk of their sales. Them improving the game any further is only to keep those fans happy and to complete your game. It's, there's not a huge, there's not a massive, massive pool of people at the bottom. I mean, a lot of people are not willing to wait until after early access. And I think it ruins a lot of games. A lot of games coming out in a finished product and even get... <laughs> I could go on, could go on about games not coming out in a finished product, but I'm not, I'm not going to because I'm talking about early access, and that's games coming out in an even, even less of a finished product. So, like I say, that's my rant about it. I think that it should be, ex I think it should be massively limited now. Don't think they should actually really be accepting anymore, except for exceptional circumstances. And I'm not on about if EA wants to release a game on Steam Greenlight, although that would be that would be uh, really bizarre, to be honest. And I think Steam will be better for it. I personally, I'm, I'm not a big fan of EA. I'm not a big fan of Ubisoft, but I really do hope another company can get big, like Steam and actually challenge them and make them take some more responsibility rather than Steam having free reign to accept anything and do whatever it likes. And so, anyway, I finished on that. If you have your own opinion on early access, please do leave it in the comments. Uh, and I, would, I do read them, every single one. I might not reply to all of them, but I do read them. And I was going to say. But yeah, my opinion has changed on it from... I'm a lot more critical of it now. Anyway, at this moment in time, the Steam box is actually done. And I'm trying to use it as my gaming console. I'm not really gaming that much on the PC. I'm downloading games onto the Steam box and playing it with the controller. But we're not going into that. Um, hopefully, I will actually be able to take this off. No, can I not? It's stuck. Ugh. Oh, no. I don't think I'm going to be able to... I wanted to show you the... The screen. There it is. There's a the screen. So there is The Witcher 2. Uh, that is the. I've never, just never seen this start green screen before. It must be for the actual Steam box. The box itself is down there, but that is in other episodes, of course. And I can use my. It could just be on my PC, obviously, but you know, you can use the controller to boot up The Witcher 2. Um, the frame rate on the camera is actually a lot slower than what this is in real life. If it loads up quickly enough, I will give you a a brief glimpse of how it looks. And that won't be that great. Uh, I've not got any sound on because I've not plugged the speakers in. But I am actually running the game The Witcher 2 on high. I could probably go... I, don't, I'm, hmm, I probably couldn't go ultra. But it is high on 1080p, which, even though it's only The Witcher 2, I've got high hopes that if The Witcher 3 is modified for SteamOS, it should be able to play that as well. But I'm going to do a full-on review about this anyway. So, I don't really know how it looks on the webcam. It looks a bit 
yeah, it does look a bit slower than it is in the actual game. It's actually very, very smooth in the game, and as you can see, well, everyone knows how pretty The Witcher 2 is, but yeah, it does look really well, really good, and the combat's very smooth and everything, but uh, yeah, like I say, it looks a bit slower on the webcam than it does in real life, but that's to be expected, I suppose. Anyway, thank you much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon. Goodbye.